Louisiana, named after King Louis XVI of France. The state is best known for Mardi Gras and jazz, as well as a beautiful blend of Creole and Cajun cultures. If you like interesting food and friendly people, you'd love it here. Although, this place is in the deep south, so there's going to be a lot of issues with health, poverty, and crime. While a lot of the state's really neat, the fact is, lots of places here are in a bad place right now. Hey everybody! I'm here in the state of Louisiana in a swamp. And as you can see, they litter here like they do everywhere else. Today we're going to talk about the worst places to live in the state of Louisiana. And it's not swamps like this, it's actual cities. It's places where there's a lot of crime and poverty and it's really sad. So stick around as we get ready to talk about the worst places to live in Louisiana. We begin our tour of the worst places to live in Louisiana in Opelousas. It's a teeny little place of 15,000 people in St. Landry Parish, about an hour north of Lafayette. But the population here has gone down a lot over the last decade. When you read about this place, you'll understand why. Opelousas remains known for being the Zydeco capital. Zydeco is a music genre that blends rhythm and blues. And many people here are singing the blues, which is just sad. While Opelousas was once known to be a thriving city with a fun downtown shopping area, things sure have changed since people began moving away for better job opportunities. What Opelousas lacks is a solid economic base. You can buy a home here for $138,000, and that's well below the U.S. average. But as I preach all the time, cheap is not always good. This city's full of poverty, and currently half the population here gets some sort of state or federal assistance. Over 7% of people aren't even working in Opelousas, and the jobs are decreasing too. And the crime rate here is 300% above the national average. That's just crazy. Because of the crime, people feel unsafe to go out at night here, so there isn't much of a nightlife at all, especially for the kids. You'd think that would mean they'd be studying, but the graduation rate here is an awful 72%. But at least you can get some great Cajun food here. Opelousas calls itself the spice capital of the world. Good for you, Opelousas. Next up is Shreveport. This place was once the capital of Louisiana briefly during the Civil War. Today it's the third largest city in Louisiana with a population of just about 200,000 people. It's in northwest Louisiana and it's known to be the commercial and financial hub of the area. Back in the day there was a lot of oil drilling here. Today locals say this place is on life support and that is just mean. The job market here is awful and one out of four people live in poverty. This could explain why the average cost of a home is only $127,000. Part of the reason the home prices are so low is because Shreveport has one of the highest crime rates in America, and the murder rate here is super high. Your chance of being the victim of a crime every year is 1 in 18. And things don't seem to be getting better for Shreveport. This is the fourth slowest growing city in the nation. Locals complain about the awful job market, the violence, their government, and the roads, which desperately need to be redone. They also complain that Shreveport has the highest property taxes in the whole state. I don't know where all that money's going. Folks are aware that changes need to be made, and many people say it's the residents themselves who need to fix this place. There's some museums here, and an aquarium, and a casino. Though, casinos never really make a place better. They usually make a place worse. Next up is Donaldsonville. This was also a former capital of this state. How many former capitals does this state have anyways? Donaldsonville is along the Mississippi and Ascension Parish, about halfway between Baton Rouge and Nolens. This place was once known for being a haven for runaway slaves during the Civil War. Unfortunately for a city of 8,000 people, it has a lot of issues. 40% of the population lives in poverty, and 12% of people just refuse to work. The median income here is about 25k a year. Homes are only 180 grand, but there just aren't many jobs in town. And crime is bad. You'd have about a 1 in 20 chance of being attacked or robbed every year you lived here. That sucks. Residents of Donaldsonville complain about the number of abandoned homes, the lack of things to do for kids, and the schools. Donaldsonville's graduation rate is well below the national average at a worrisome 76%. Come on, kids, get the studying done. You know what, well, there's a lot of cons to living here. The folks who live here, a lot of them say they're happy. They appreciate living in a small town where everybody knows everybody, and they cherish the rich history of their city. Good for you, Donaldson Villians. I hope you're happy. See, that's the thing about the Deep South. 
Despite all the challenges, a lot of people down here keep a smile on their faces and they accept things for the way they are. We could learn a lot of lessons from Louisianans, I'll tell you that. So this is probably a good time to talk about a sponsor of the channel. Everything's more expensive right now. The stock market lost a bunch in 2022 and real estate's showing similar signs we saw in 2008. And of course, inflation, people. That's a big worry for all of us. But do you know where smart Americans are finding support for their retirement accounts? Physical gold and silver. Experts say gold could surge 20 to 50% in 2023 alone. Patriot Gold Group is a top-rated gold and silver coin dealer that helps customers invest in precious metals. Look, I stay up in the news, and they're all saying there's going to be a recession. If you're worried there's going to be an economic setback, a good alternative is a no-fee-for-life IRA or 401k backed in physical gold and silver. One of the best ways to diversify is through precious metals. They stand the test of time. And Patriot Gold is America's highest-rated gold dealer. Call them at 888-925-1970. You can talk to a real live advisor who will send you their free investor guide. And there's no obligation. A lot of top experts say gold and silver is going to hit record highs. I'm telling you, I'm doing it. The link to Patriot Gold's in the description. And let them know Nick Johnson sent you. Eunice is also a bad place to live right now. It's also in St. Landry Parish, about an hour west of Opelousas. This is home to the Cajun Music Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, Cajun food and music is not the cure for this troublesome city. In fact, many locals consider their city to be an eyesore, and they say it's in desperate need of renovation. Good paying jobs are scarce here, and 11% of residents have been out of work forever now. This leaves 30% of residents living below the poverty line. Eunice is not the safest city either. The crime rate's 140% above the national average, and your chances of being a victim here are 1 in 18. Crime runs rampant here after the sun goes down. Homes are only 130 grand, and while small towns like this might be the only place left for people to afford in the U.S. anymore, there are far better small towns to live than in little Eunice. Now we're going to move on to Monroe. It's the second largest metro area in northern Louisiana. There used to be 60,000 people here, but now there's only 47,000, and it's dropping fast. The unemployment rate isn't too bad, actually. Only about 1 in 20 people are out of work. The problem is the jobs there are paid terribly. 37% of people live below the poverty line here. And while crime is declining, Monroe is still considered to be one of the most dangerous U.S. metro areas. Wow. Your chances of becoming the victim of violent crime every year is a 1 in 34 chance. 1 in 34 chance of being attacked or raped or murdered. What the hell? Locals describe Monroe as being a meh city. It's not special. There's not a lot of things to do. People say there's some okay areas, and it's cheap, and it's a very close-knit city. So at least there's that. Did you know Louisiana had a pathway to poverty recovery program in place? But then Hurricane Katrina came and ruined it. That's devastating, Mappy. Hurricanes ruin a lot of stuff. That's too bad. There's some really good people down here, too. Karen? That's an awful nice thing you just said, darling. You get an A today. I don't know if I've ever given you an A before, woman. Ville Platte is another city with a declining population. In the 60s, this place had shot up to 10,000 people. But in the last decade alone, 15% of the population said, see ya later. It's way out in the middle of nowhere in a poor area of Evangeline Parish, sort of north of Opelousas. There's a lot of problems with Ville Platte. There's a reason homes here are only $100,000 on average. The unemployment rate's nearly 17%, and a whopping 40% of people here get welfare. Just wow, no wonder everyone's leaving. The crime rate here is more than double the U.S. average, and that's just awful. Your chance of being the victim of a crime is 1 in 18. But the graduation rate here is 86%, which isn't too bad. Good for you, Ville Platte kids. An overwhelming number of Ville Platte residents say that their city is just lacking opportunities for growth. It's a city rich in culture, but it's also rich in crime, and a lot of people are afraid to go outside at night. This place just lacks the economic development needed to bring new people into the city, and they desperately need new buildings and jobs. People just have no choice but to leave for somewhere better. But Ville Platte calls itself the smoked meat capital of the world, everyone. Yay! If you like rice, you'll like Crowley, Louisiana. If you don't like rice, 
You won't like it here. Who doesn't like rice? There's 12,000 people in Little Crowley, which calls itself the rice capital of the world. <laughs> Every city we've talked about calls itself the something capital of the world. Crowley is in Acadia Parish, about a half hour west of Lafayette. Residents describe Crowley as being a small town where pretty much everybody keeps themselves. Some say Crowley isn't full of very nice people. <laughs> the main complaint here is crime, though. It's 132% above the national average. And the job market here is getting worse, but Crowley's unemployment rate is still only 6%. That's not terrible. Foreign people live in poverty, though, and the taxes are high. Crowley residents say there just aren't a lot of after-school activities for kids. And the parents fear that with all the crime in the city, the kids are going to go down that same path. According to locals, Crowley seems to be a pit stop to better towns. There's just nothing to do here other than the Rice Festival, and that's only once a year. But it's cheap. Families down on their luck come down here for the inexpensive homes and the country living. Here we are, the capital of Louisiana, Baton Rouge. The city of 225,000 people lies on the Mississippi River. Baton Rouge is known for many things like good food, culture, and of course, LSU. But Baton Rouge is also known for having a super high crime rate. Crime was kind of going down, but then the pandemic came and it shot up by a lot. East Baton Rouge had 170 murders in 2021. Can you imagine that? One out of every 1,323 people here got murdered in East Baton Rouge last year. A lot of people are fleeing Baton Rouge and moving into the burbs. Aside from the crime issues, Baton Rouge does have problems with poverty and job opportunities. I mean, 26% of people live in poverty. And for a big city, a lot of people express frustration with the job market and the low wages here. And others complain about the traffic, the high car insurance rates, the litter, the homelessness, the blight, the bad schools, the crime in the schools. Despite the negatives to Baton Rouge, though, there's some positives to living here. There's a lot to do for fun, and it's still pretty cheap compared to most U.S. cities of its size. The average home here is only $220,000. Could be worse. Stay out of danger. Bastrop, Louisiana, the only city on this list that was founded by a scam artist, or the only one we know of. You may not have even heard about this place. It's north of Monroe in Morehouse Parish, practically in Arkansas. It kind of seems like the unfortunate beginning of this city was not a good omen. Bastrop faces many problems, one being a crime rate that's 250% above the national average. Half the people in this city of 11,000 people live in poverty. That is just shocking for a first world country. Half of your community lives in poverty? The average household here only brings in 20K. As you can imagine, there just aren't a lot of jobs here, and the schools are just miserable. Only 60% of kids graduate here. People are just leaving this place. In the last decade, 16% of the population's left, likely for good. There's a lot of factors for Bastrop's decline. They had a big mill that closed down, and a lot of jobs were lost, and they haven't been the same since. People here pray for change, and they wish this place was the way it once was. A lot of people say Bastrop's a retirement community, since most of the people that have stuck around are all the elderly ones. And then there's the crime. It has one of the highest crime rates of all U.S. cities. Your chances of being the victim of some sort of crime is 1 in 12 here. That's just about the highest crime rate of any city I've ever talked about. And while a lot of Bastrop residents have one foot out the door, there are some who appreciate living here. I mean, homes are only $60,000. You could probably buy a home here today yourself. And you can't say that about a lot of places in this country anymore. And where's our worst place to live in the state of Louisiana? That would be Bogalusa, a little place of 11,000 people near the Mississippi border, way out in Washington Parish. Now this rural poor place is in a bad way, fella. Back in the day, they called this Magic City because of all the rapid growth. But today, people are moving the other direction. A lot of the businesses that were once here have shut down and the city's rampant with unemployment and poverty. One in three people here gets benefits and 13% probably won't ever work again in their lives. There just aren't a lot of good, decent paying jobs here. And if you don't want to make minimum wage and you have to drive a long way for a decent job, there's really nothing to do here for fun. And we know kids don't go outside anymore. It's a fading city with no signs of growth. The city's dirty and smelly and just depressing. It's very sad, but it's a reality in the Deep South. This is just how things are down here in many places. Bogalusa, Louisiana, everyone. Well, it looks like I ain't gonna find any catfish today. Well, that was the worst places to live in Louisiana. It's really sad and hopefully these places can get better. 
Now, if you're thinking about where the best places to live in Louisiana are, they're gonna be in places like this. So move there if you want good living. And for now, we're gonna head on down to the rest of the swamp and I'm gonna see if I can catch a gator. Bye everybody. Louisiana takes a lot of time fighting crime, fighting crime. Coon ass people always looking out, helping out their friends. Oil's gonna bring the money, and Mardi Gras brings all the people. Louisiana has a lot of hurricanes. Louisiana has a lot of fun parades. Louisiana has a lot of culture ways. Come eat some crawfish and vignettes right away. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey everyone. So it's pretty clear by now that elected leaders aren't gonna help you. If you don't like what you saw in this video, demanding change won't work. You're gonna have to do it on your own. If you want to be safe and want your community to be a place where people want to live, you're going to have to clean the place up yourselves. You're going to have to work with your friends and neighbors to lower crime. Politicians clearly don't care as much anymore. It's up to us. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.